Now you might be watching today's video because you consider yourself to be a high handicap golfer. But to be honest with you, what I'm about to reveal would probably apply to many, many more average golfers. But you see, the thing is, we all want exactly the same. We want to find more fairways, but we want to do so in hit and driver just as long as we possibly can. So we need a combination. We need control. And we need consistent ball speeds across the club face. And we want to achieve that with a combination of a shaft and a head that is relevant to our swing speed. And for that, we're going to need a launch monitor and the expertise of a custom fitter to identify. But before I reveal five drivers, which I consider are the best for high handicappers, I want to make sure I make one thing completely clear. And that is the fact that a club is only as consistent as your swing. And I'm yet to find any club yet that auto corrects. But having said that, there is no doubt modern technology within the current driver releases and that of the last few years, that can certainly help with ball speed, helping with launch and also nullifying your shot shapes. So there's help there, you just will be very careful and make sure you choose wisely and understand exactly what it is that your expectancy is compared to what you're going to get delivered. Got to go, I think. Go. Yeah, just a, well, made front edge, a little bit short. Come on then. But of course, I know how this works. All you want to know is what are my top five drivers. Well, what I'm going to list is, I'm going to give you, well, I'm going to give you four drivers to start with, and then you're going to have to hang around for one little bonus ball at the end. But essentially, you could pick these drivers out yourself because we've got from TaylorMade, we've got the qi10 max from ping we've got the g430 max 10k from paradigm we've got would you believe the uh, from callaway rather we've got the ai smoke max d from pxg we've got their black ops driver and they've all got one thing very much in common and that is a very high moi so what is moi and why is it so important to you in that forgiveness stakes but before i describe exactly what moi is there are also some considerations that you need to make that will make these five drivers even better performing if you get these things correct and that is choosing the right loft choosing the right flex of shaft length of shaft and also the weight of shaft they're hugely important and if you get any of those things wrong MOI and max drivers will do nothing to help your game. And most of those factors will be identified during a custom fit and why it's why I always recommend, no matter what you hear off YouTube or any clowns like me recommending what you should use, get a custom fit. Identify first of all your swing speed and generally from there you can identify those factors when choosing a correctly fitted driver. It's not going to be enough club, unfortunately, I haven't got enough of them in my bag. Oh, it carried the green. I wasn't expecting that. Decent strike. The other thing I wanted to mention is when you're watching this channel, you've got to understand where you stand in the spectrum of, uh, of golf. A lot of other channels within YouTube are reviewing these drivers and they're generally professional golfers with a club head speed that is far different than yours and mine. So to put some perspective, I swing the driver about 95, 96, 97 mile an hour when I'm out on the golf course. That's much more like perhaps what you will do and uh, I have the same problems that you're faced with as well. So please understand when you're listening to advice as to what driver you should choose, I fully appreciate what it is you're looking for and the struggles that you're going through. So let's talk about that uh, MOI, what does it mean? And you'll notice that a lot of drivers um, this time around have been mentioning the number 10K, particularly uh, with Ping, as they've mentioned it within their name, the title of this club. 
And essentially, MOI is about less torque or less twisting, but particularly on impact when you hit the ball. So if you hit the ball low in the heel or high out the toe, the face doesn't deflect, if you like, and it stays as square um, as possible. And it's, it's a massive change. I appreciate it. I recognize it's a thing, but at the end of the day, depending on your swing path, uh, it's still not gonna eradicate all the problems. And no doubt many of you have got these drivers in your hand and are already seeing balls go left and right and understand there is no magic wand. And as I said earlier, there is no autocorrect. There's a bit of help, but don't be kidded that any of these drivers are gonna all of a sudden solve all your swing problems because they're not. Back to that custom fit or at least technology and what you require. And the first thing I would consider is the length of shaft, which I've spoke about quite a lot. And um, loft and length of shaft are hugely important. So if I ask you a simple question, which do you hit more consistently, your driver or your nine iron? Most of you would answer nine iron. I would hope you do anyway. And that's largely due to the loft and length of shaft that's on the nine iron. So if we push all that forward, it's exactly the same principle in my eyes with driver in hand. And for me on a personal level, I found much more consistency with a shorter shaft because what I've simply done, I've got greater control over the club head. I found the center of the club face more often and without doubt, still with all the modern technology that they talk about, the fastest ball speeds are still out the center of the club face. So that in itself has meant my driving has become far more consistent. So we've got five real good drivers, but make sure you get that length of shaft correct. The next thing to consider is, I mentioned the loft of a 9-iron makes it a lot easier to hit, and you will know the at the top end of the bag, the less loft you have, the more difficult it generally becomes. And with driver, it's really key that you identify that as well. So for me, what I've learned is a lot of golfers should be looking at drivers with maybe 12 degrees of loft. What that's gonna do, it's gonna help with launch, which is a considerable problem when we start to get a little bit slower with the swing speed. That launch will also give you a longer carry distance. And if you get the combination right, there's always a, uh, a caveat to everything that I say here. If you get the, the two right, and that being spin and launch, if you get that combination correct, then that's when you're gonna get the optimum performance for your swing speed. So what you will have noticed is my top five drivers, it's got very little to do with the brand or model that you choose. And it's far more about making sure that when you make a decision about which driver you prefer, because let's be honest, these are all gonna do pretty much the same in terms of ball speed performance, getting those other factors right is the important bit. That's certainly the best I've it by some way. But I don't have a personal favorite because I'm staying very neutral on this one. So in the end, what I'm trying to say is you're gonna pick one of these drivers if you're in the market for one that is based on very much personal preferences. And that being the way it looks, the way it sounds and feels, perhaps the cost, although they're all pretty much similar, I've featured. And I don't wanna go without saying that previous models from the last few years have all been pretty much similar, maybe minor advancements. So there's every reason why you can pick up these uh, predecessors, save yourself a few quid. Like I said, I'm never trying to sell anything on this channel, although some people think otherwise. Buy yourself that second hand driver, but well, make sure you understand all those things, mainly being swing speed and what is relevant to your personal situation. And I know you can't always get that if you buy a club second hand that is custom fit because it's majorly important. So finally, earlier on in the video, I suggest there was five drivers that I would list as being my, uh, my most forgiving of 2024. And so far I've named four. So thanks to everybody who was stuck around. This one driver is, uh, I think, of particular interest. It's again, not necessarily about the sort of make that I'm using or gonna hit right now. 
my god that's again just absolutely flown off incredible it is a mini driver and i still cannot believe that more and more manufacturers are not producing more of these drivers or giving more options in terms of that shorter shaft length on a personal level I like two things about a mini driver. I like the shorter shaft, which I like in a normal driver, but I also like the smaller head type as well. And I've got a little bit of versatility. But I can tell you, I've not hit any drive further tonight than the one that I've just hit. And that is with a driver which, with a much shorter shaft and with a lot more loft than anything else is in the bag. So please don't dismiss mini drivers i do know that they're rare and a little bit more hard to get hold of but if you get the opportunity and you're going to spend 500 quid on a new piece of kit then don't dismiss this thing because as everything i've just talked about more loft shorter shaft and it's got plenty of forgiveness packed into that face in terms of ball speeds high moi why not give this one a whirl as well right that's me done I'm out a bit late tonight, it's starting to go dark in the UK, early evenings and uh, it's not been the nicest tonight. Thanks for sticking around, thanks for watching. Don't forget, we're nearing 100k. If you've enjoyed what you've seen this evening, then uh, perhaps hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'll probably see you all soon.